Hey guys, welcome to Streak Initiative. This is Sukanya Rana, and this week we are covering quality-related questions from your prelims 2021. Uh, basically, these are important themes, and again, use these videos as a break between your uh, studies for prelims, so that uh, even in these breaks, I think you can cover up few topics or revise some of the topics, and I think that will help you out in your prelims preparation. So let's move on to the first question of the day. Now, uh, this question is related to a project which was there in news. So anything that is uh, you know there in news and related to um, any of the polity subject, just make note of it. And also, if you can link to some other ideas with respect to that questions, make sure you cover them also. Like we'll look in this question. So this question is particularly about eCourts project, and uh, you have to identify. which of the following statement is correct so the first statement is that it is a pan india project monitored funded by department of justice second is that it is uh, one of the national e governance project being implemented in district subordinate court of the country third is that the project has been implemented by e committee supreme court of india along with department of justice nic so uh, the you have to identify uh, whether all these three statements are wrong or some of them are right or all of them are right so uh, see the answer for this particular question is d all the statements are right here uh, but there are couple of things that you should know about like um, what uh, what is this e courts project you should know uh whether it's limited to only the supreme court or high courts or even the district courts are covered under it or not right so these are some of the things that you should know there's this term that has come in this particular question that is uh, e committee of the supreme court now what is this e committee who is the chairman of this committee who are the members of this particular committee so all these things you should be aware about this is very important right so uh, make sure any question that comes you are able to link it to other aspects like uh, there was another piece of news that has been there in your current affairs which is national judicial data grid now is it any way linked to this right so you should know all these ideas now this is how you link the questions to other current affairs and you are able to revise a larger portion right so that is the approach you should always follow for prelims now uh, the answer here is d and recently a draft vision was actually released by in fact e committee of the supreme court and that is why this question was in news so yes they are covering even the subordinate and the district courts basically the idea is that it will allow all the uh, you know designated services to be provided to your litigants the lawyers and the judiciary through the universal computerization of all the infrastructure that is present in these uh, courts at various levels right so it's a pan india project basically and that is why uh, uh, providing that e connectivity is very important and uh, yes it is monitored by department of justice but there are couple of other bodies also that are working on it like nic is working on it uh, and uh, also like i talked about um, national data uh, judicial data grid so in fact that is a flagship project which is implemented in e court project right so that is something that comes under this project so that is also another thing that you should know because um, N- njdc is basically aiming as ease uh, like a ease of doing business kind of a thing like it's it's improving the innovation it's improving data collection within the courts so it's one of the part of a larger project which is e courts project right so uh, yeah always trying to link all the questions to various aspects so that you can have a better revision with every questions next question that we're going to do is a star campaign campaigner now again this piece of news was there in your current affairs the uh, uh, expenditure limits have be had been extended so uh, uh, automatically this becomes important Uh, and the idea is that you should know how, you should have a brief background about what star campaigner is right so that is important i think so the first statement here is that um, the expenditure which is incurred on campaigning by stars is exempt from being added to the election expenditure of the candidate and the second is that in india there is no law governing who can or cannot be made as a star campaigner and uh, you have to identify the incorrect statement here guys so the answer for this question is d 
right there is in fact no law particular law which is actually dealing with just the idea of star campaigner uh, there are some guidelines which are provided by mod model code of conduct like it tells you if if a prime minister or a, a former prime minister is a, a star campaign then the expenditure whatever is incurred on his security that will be borne by the government so some of the rules and the regulations are actually covered under various aspects of say model code of conduct but no separate law has been created to deal with star campaigner right and uh, again election commission here has the right to decide who becomes the star campaigner who is not so that is also another piece of news so both the statements are actually correct here all right and uh, like i told you the expenditure limit was increased that is why it was in news and also some of the other details like uh, if it's a registered party uh, uh, and a recognized political party then they can have 40 number of star campaigners on the other hand unrecognized ones can have 20 so these bits of details that is associated with the these particular uh, star campaigners, you should know. Uh, like also, uh, uh, within how many weeks of notification should uh, should the party submit their names of star campaigners? So all these small small details are important here. Um, so keep an eye on whenever you're revising your uh, current affairs related to these ideas. Next question of the day is tribunal. I think even before. I had uh, put up a tribunal related question like I told you tribunals was in news so all the ideas with respect to tribunals like various tribunals and uh, this particular ordinance they all become very important right so this particular question is actually talking about your tribunal reforms ordinance 2021 and it's picked up some of the uh, features from it so the first is that under this the chairman and the member of the tribunal will be appointed by the central government on the recommendation of search come selection committee and second is that it amended uh, the Cine cinematograph fee act 1952 and abolished this particular tribunal which is film certification appellate tribunal so uh, the answer uh, you can pause the video let's think for a time and then you can listen to the answer so the answer here is uh, d guys uh, again, be careful. The question says you have to identify the incorrect statement. Don't make such silly mistakes. So the answer is D here. And uh, basically the idea behind uh, this particular ordinance was how we can rationalize uh, the number of tribunals that are present there and improve their condition of service. So uh, under this, nine laws have been replaced with the... Uh, uh, the appellate uh, with respect to this appellate authorities and uh, the government came out rules with respect to the appointment of members to these tribunals. So we had the search come selection committee and uh, in this particular committee what is there is uh, number one we have chairman as the uh, chief justice of India right and if 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 he is not present then in in place of him a judge a supreme court judge can be nominated by him so there there's a big list of uh, people who are part of this particular search committee like there are secretaries nominated by the government uh, any outgoing uh, you know judge of a or a chief just a chief justice of a high court can also be part of it there are other set of restrictions also being put here like what is the term of the office that is 4 years so all these ideas have been covered in this particular ordinance. Make sure you go through them. And like I told you before, uh, some acts now here. So Cinematography Act was covered here. And uh, in total, nine acts have been, uh, you know, replaced with. So make sure you just have one glance over these acts so that uh, you don't get confused because we've got a lot of them like trademarks, copyright, patent, airport authority of India, uh, the control of national highways. So a lot of acts have been covered here. Make sure you have one glance over these acts. The next question, are we going to pick up a commission? Now, again, uh, the commission that I picked here is uh, related to scheduled caste. Now, why did I pick here is more important rather than this question. I picked up this particular commission because uh, recently what we did was we celebrated the 130th uh, birth anniversary of uh, uh, B.R. Ambedkar's uh, ji, that is uh, Bharat Ratna. 
right so automatically this kind of uh, you know there's this i created this linkage with the schedule cast uh, commission and that anniversary so this linkage is not just limited to prelims make sure even you keep that watch out even for mains like br ambedkar as a topic is very important you should know the parties he's created uh, even um, sometimes you know uh, not in upsc but in couple of other papers they directly ask you about say his dictatorial thesis that he's created so that thesis also have been important for other papers i guess uh, so yeah make sure you go through br ambedkar that is important even for prelims and for mains right so that is why this question is here so this question is talking about this national commission of scheduled caste the first statement here is that it is a constitutional body which is established under the article 338 of the indian constitution second is that the member of the commission uh, are appointed by the president under his warrant and seal and third is that the condition of the service and the tenure of the office of the uh, members of this particular commission are determined by the president so i think if you have done your static portion in a very nice way i think you'll be easily able to attempt this question i think uh, not even the linkage to current affairs like it was a news because of this uh, 30th 130th anniversary but still if you have done your static portion you will be able to attempt all the statements are correct here so the answer here is d uh, uh, the article that covers here is in fact 338 it is uh, the members are appointed by president and again tenure is decided by them so i think this can be said uh, as a simple question but make sure again the point that i made in the first uh, part of my explanation that b r ambedkar as a topic is very important both for prelims and for mains so let's look at the last question of the day that we're going to talk about now again uh, right to freedom of movement is something that is can be done based upon your art, uh, understanding of the static portion also but why was it in news because uh, there was this uh, ruling by Bom bombay high court where the fast tag making it mandatory for all vehicle would not violate citizens fundamental right so with that linkage of fast tag and everything this issue had come in the news and that is why this question is here so it's important you understand how this particular thing works so the question here is uh, related to freedom of movement and the first statement here is that it is protected against only state action and not private individuals and the second statement here is that it is guaranteed under the article 19 of the indian constitution and uh, you have to identify the correct statement here so the answer here is c guys uh, i think even with static portion you can easily understand uh, that uh, you can easily attempt this question also uh, again uh, some few other details here that uh, yes every citizen have a, has a right to move throughout the country and uh, it is only given to the citizens right foreigners do not have that kind of right and also the thing is uh, that there are certain kind of restrictions that have been placed upon this particular right like uh, preserving the tribal culture and all that stuff and uh, that is why uh, uh, you you might have heard about a lot of things like inner line permit and all those things so that is in keeping with those exceptions so the statement one is right Uh, statement two here is see there are two set of movements within the country and outside the country. So when we are talking about moving outside the country, that will be covered under Article Twenty One, not Article Nineteen. So be careful about that fact. I think that is a good fact to remember. Uh, so guys, that's it for today. Uh, all the best for your prelims. Keep on revising. Keep on uh, working hard, and I hope you sail through. And all the best. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and press the bell icon on the YouTube app and never miss another update from Civil Daily.